Welcome back. So as Indianapolis is on another record pace for homicides, the mayor has released a budget plan that he says is laser focused on stopping violent crime. Lauren, most of the mayor's budget proposal focuses on what he calls an unprecedented investment in anti-crime and anti-violence initiatives. And this morning, our Rafael Sanchez is speaking live to the mayor about why he thinks the budget plan will make Indianapolis more safer. Rafael, good morning. Megan and Lauren, good morning to you. Joining us live this morning outside of Studio A, Mayor Joe Hoxha. Good morning, sir, and welcome to good our morning. outside studio. As we continue to be socially distant, sir, last night at the City County Council meeting, you talked about $150 million more for public safety. Mm -hmm. How do you know that that number will work? That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, and it's going to be a transformative moment for the city of Indianapolis. Typically, Raphael, in any particular year, IMPD's budget may be $250 million plus. Now we're able to make an additional investment in public safety of $150 million of American Rescue Plan do uh, monies uh, that were made available by Congress earlier this year. It's going to be a three-year plan. It's not gonna be $150 million in one year, but rather it's a $150 million investment over a three-year period. And I think it could be, in, in essence, transformative for our community. $150 million is a lot of money. Does that indicate that we are in crisis mode, that you're spending that much more money on public safety? Gun violence is a public health crisis. And Indianapolis is not alone in this regard. I mean, every major urban area in the country is experiencing unprecedented levels of gun violence and homicides. And so rather than wait or follow, uh, we want to lead, and it's the $420 million from the American Rescue Plan that's allowing Indianapolis to do transform, make transformative investments that I think will turn the tide of gun violence in our city. You're also spending millions and millions on other issues, like housing, food insecurity. Will this appease those in the community who suggest that too much money is already spent on public safety? Well, the truth is, is that even uh, the monies that we allocate uh, for things other than public safety, as you mentioned, food insecurity, adequate housing, affordable housing, uh, addressing chronic issues of homelessness, all of these are anti-crime initiatives. They, they may not be named as such, but they're all designed to go to the root causes of the violence, which is in essence, the poverty that too many residents of our cities experience. Your opposition, the Indy GOP, has, has already said that much of what you're presenting are they're calling failed policies, and they say, Mr. Mayor, that you are out of touch. Mm -hmm. What do you say to your opposition? Well, I say to them uh, respectfully, I'm in touch, uh, and the policies are certainly not failed. In fact, from 2016 to 2019, the policies that the city county council republicans and democrats uh initiated were working uh, but the world was slammed with a global pandemic that no one saw coming and it has profoundly affected uh, uh so many people not just here in indianapolis but around the country so the policies that we implemented in my first term were making a meaningful difference in terms of minimizing the level of gun violence that we were experiencing. COVID-19 changed that. We now are in a position where we have the monies to scale up those policies in ways that we have never done before. And I am confident that our city will be safer uh, over the course of the next few years. How do we hold you accountable, right? You're talking about 419 million overall from the American Rescue Plan. You're spending a, a big chunk of it on public safety. So how do the voters, how do, how, how do the people say, you know what, whatever you're doing, however this shakes out over the next three years, how will you measure success? Well, let me just say, in terms of accountability, this is not a decision that I make by myself. In fact, it's just a, a budget that I present face. to the council. You're the, you're the face. I'm the, I'm the face of the budget, but it will go through an excruciating two-month accountability uh, with, with the council. And all Republicans, all Democrats on the council will have the ability to weigh in. As far as the public is concerned, I want the numbers of gun violence to go down. Now, it's not going to be something that I wave a magic wand and they'll change overnight. But over the course of these next three years in particular, I want to make sure that we have in place policies that will 
stop the rising level of gun violence and hopefully uh, in meaningful ways reduce it. I imagine, Mr. Mayor, that you and other mayors across the country would rather spend those dollars on education, parks in, t in total. But we have seen a surge of crime across the country, coast to coast, rural areas and the cities. How much more money can be spent, per se, on public safety? Is this, a, is this an issue of more for public safety or changing hearts? Because you can spend all the millions you want, right? But if, if issues in the communities don't change, does it really matter how much you spend? No, that's a, that's a very insightful question, Raphael, in the sense that uh, I've said many times that the mayor alone, the police alone, uh, cannot fundamentally change the trajectory of our city. It's going to take the community as a whole. That's why I'm very pleased that as part of this $150 million package, we have $45 million going out into the neighborhoods, going out into community groups, going out into members <clears throat> uh, and residents of our city uh, to work on their own uh, crime prevention efforts. It's going to take a community as a whole to change these things. Now, I'm glad the money is available, and I'm deeply grateful that Congress passed the American Rescue Plan, giving us a transformative moment in our city's history. We just as a community have to collectively decide that we're going to take advantage of this moment. The money is limited in the sense that after a while the money dries up, right? What do you do long term? I know you're focused on the short term. You want to fix this problem now. But after you hire those extra 100 officers and you spent all this money, will taxes have to go up? How do you spend this three or five years from now? No, I think that that uh, is an investment that is prudent to be made now so that we can address the problem now. If the problem dissipates uh, or is reduced uh, significantly, uh, we'll be able to make adjustments. And with uh, a robust economy that I hope uh, comes back after COVID is finally in the rearview mirror, uh, we will have additional revenue, whether it be local income tax, whether it be property taxes. Uh, the city is in, by the way, I should say, a, a very, very competitive fiscal health. We, this budget will be the fifth consecutive balanced budget that has passed uh, once it does pass, and I hope it does. So we're in, we're in very, very good fiscal position as we go forward, and that's why we feel making these investments with the additional monies provided by the American Rescue Plan are a prudent investment at exactly the right time. And I should also point out that the city is keeping in reserve $105 million of this federal dollars just in case something goes wrong. Final question, we have 30 seconds. You're also dealing with the global pandemic. That's why we're outside. We're about six feet apart. The number of people still not getting their shots, Mayor, remains low in Marion County. How do you increase those numbers? Yeah, you just need to, to encourage people. I think there's a, a recognition that with this Delta variant, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. And I think that uh, we've seen an increase in the number of vaccinations. Now, it's still not enough, but we have seen an increase in the number of vaccinations uh, because of the profound effect that the Delta variant or maybe even some other variant may cause. It wreaks havoc uh, on our public health and it's very easy to address. Get a shot in the arm and Indianapolis will be better for it. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Joe Hogsett, Mayor of Indianapolis, thank you so much. You're welcome to come anytime to Outdoor Studio A. That's right. I hope you enjoyed That's it. That's right. These are- uh, We even put out the truck just for you, Mr. Mayor. It's, it's, that's incredible. Just for you. <laughs> Lauren, now back to you in Studio A. Raphael, Mayor Joe Hogsett, thank you.